Support for Entrepreneurs Enigma and all the shows on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Storyblock. Think of our content management system. Now think of being able to update the other 5, 10, even 20 places you need pricing and product descriptions changed. Update content once. Publish it everywhere. Sign up for a free account to see how simple content management can be. Go to storyblock.com slash enigma. It's storyblock without the C dot com slash enigma. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, this is a rerun of the Guy Kawasaki interview that I did a few weeks ago, and I wanted to reshare on the stream for this week. Hopefully you'll enjoy it, and let me know. Seth at EntrepreneursEnigma.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. Today is a special episode. We have Guy Kawasaki of Apple fame, of Guy Kawasaki fame, of all his 15 books, of of Canva fame, of Mercedes-Benz fame, of fame in general. So, hey, Guy, <laughs> how's it going? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? Not too bad. Also, Good. I almost forgot to mention, the Remarkable Podcast fame. If you don't listen to his podcast, you need to. It is fantastic. Thank you. And his latest one, which came out, did it come out today? It came out today. Yes, every so, Wednesday. Yeah. Why? Today I released uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Gar- Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah, yeah, who's a great guy. I actually, I've yeah. actually met Gary once before at a conference. Very, he seems when you, when you listen to his whole all high energy and you feel like <laughs> oh he's not a, he's not a regular guy. He's just he's Gary Vaynerchuk, but he's just a regular guy. He's very friendly and outgoing. Well, so you know, at bottom line is everybody's a regular guy. <laughs> exactly. So so guy, you're originally from Hawaii. Yes. And I, I recently read your book, Wise Guy, your autobiography. Mm-hmm. So I have a little background on you. So, and you're a prolific writer. So how did you get started? Like, I, I know the answer because I listened to the book. But for those who haven't read your Wise Guy book, how did you get started in everything, literally, just being <laughs> guy? <laughs> well, how I started start? as, a, you know, a sperm and an egg. But, yeah, well, but... There you go. <laughs> we don't well, do it from... that far back, but like, you yeah. know. So... <laughs> I am from Honolulu, Hawaii. I grew up in a lower middle class part of Hawaii. I was in the public school system, and luckily a teacher convinced my parents to put me in the private school college prep system. That led, and I don't know why I applied, but somehow I applied to Stanford, and I got in, miracle upon miracle. And at Stanford, I met someone named Mike Boych, who eventually became Apple's first software evangelist. And he hired me as the second wow. software evangelist. So my path, at least up to that point, was really predicated upon nepotism. Mm. After the Macintosh division, I started some software companies. I returned to Apple, left again to start more companies. And uh, fast forward, I'm now the chief evangelist of Canva, which is an which online I graphics design Canva. service. Yep. I'm the host of the Remarkable People podcast. That is fantastic. And you're also... I, I know this is one of the greatest entrepreneurial journeys. You're also a father. Yeah, a father of four. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm a father of one, and I'm like, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get interesting till the kids outnumber the adults. Trust me. Oh, I, well, this kid outnumbers us with his sheer, um, <laughs> with his sheer enthusiasm. We'll put it that way. You know, he outnumbers <laughs> us with energy. So, you, so you've done in-house. You've done entrepreneurship. What is the best thing about being an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur? Like, what's the best thing about doing your own thing? Well, the best thing about doing your own thing is that, in a sense, you you know you don't have to check with the man to do mm-hmm. anything. The downside of that is there's no the man to blame. So, That's true. Yeah, you know it's it's all good or all bad, but it's all you. And that's not quite true because an entrepreneur is only good as his or her employees and co-founders, et cetera, et cetera. Well, investors too. But 
you know, pretty much if you're working for Apple and you're one of you know, 100,000 employees, uh, the good news is you're very secure. The bad news is, you know, what can one person do in a 100,000 person organization that's going to really, quote unquote, dent the company as opposed to dent the universe? Mm -hmm. So what about the scariest thing about being an entrepreneur? Because you've done this quite a few times. Well, the scariest thing about an entrepreneur is, well, the obvious one is running out of money. So, Everybody yeah. expects that as an answer, yes. I would say even more scary than that is when you first ship your product because you truly don't know what's going to happen. And all your friends who are beta testers who are too polite to tell you that it sucks, um, you know, all that, that level of bullshit goes away. And now you're in the cold crew world where they're not your friends and relatives and they're going to tell you your product sucks, your book sucks, your podcast sucks, whatever mm -hmm. you do sucks. And, and that is truly, I think, more scary than running out of money. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. Time and place is everything, especially in marketing. But today there are millions of messages per minute and not enough hours in the day. How do you catch your target audience's attention? One word, LinkedIn. LinkedIn can help you speak to the right people at the right time. LinkedIn has become number one in B2B advertising in the U.S., with LinkedIn, you can stand out against your competitors, nurturing customer relationships, and growing your brand. LinkedIn delivers you quantity and quality. Its targeting tools allow you to reach precise audiences down to their job title, company name, location, and more, which means your ads are being seen by those who matter most. Scale your marketing and grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. As a thank you to their customers for helping them grow three times faster than their competition, LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign. To get this credit, go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Yeah, I guess the reality, you know, I mean, that, yeah, it's a great, that's a great answer to that because a lot of people are like, it's the unknown. And I'm like, well, yeah. I guess I expected that answer. So here's something that I like to, this is a little curveball I like to throw people. What is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? You mean physically? No, anything in general. Or mentally. <laughs> it can be both. Uh, I would say grit, pure I grit. Can it. You just have to be willing to, well, as Mark Manson, someone I interviewed for my podcast, told me that. And you know you've truly found what you want to do when it involves a shit sandwich that you mm. love to eat. So yeah, podcasting for me involves several shit sandwiches, but I love those shit sandwiches. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a great programmer, programming requires debugging. Oh so if, if you love to debug, you're probably a great programmer. If you don't love to debug, you're probably not. That's a shit sandwich. <laughs> pretty, pretty, kind of matter of fact, yeah, absolutely. And so in addition to that, you love surfing and hockey. I mean, amongst other things, but you know. <laughs> well, I, I gave up hockey for surfing. I took up hockey when I was 46. Oh, right. you gave up hockey? Yeah, I gave up hockey uh, because I have to say, I was playing hockey two, three, four times a week and I loved hockey. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered surfing and oh my God, surfing is better than hockey. Wow. I, you know, people from Minnesota cannot relate to that, but I'm telling you, Surfing is better than hockey. It is a more difficult sport than hockey. Oh, I'm sure. Because, I mean, you have the unknown <laughs> of the waves. Well. And you have to have good balance or decent balance, you know, all that well, stuff. Well, you need and decent balance to skate, too. But that's true, yeah. it, it's just, it's hard to compare. You know, one is a team sport. One is purely individual. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a difference. But, um, you know, they're, they're, of course, if you score a goal or something, that's pretty exhilarating. But, I mean... In a session, you can catch 20 waves. You have 20 to 30 second moments of exhilaration. Let's take an example. That might mean you have like four or 500 seconds of exhilaration in two hours. And there's no hockey burst, game yeah. in the world where you're going to have four to 500 seconds of exhilaration in a three period game. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah, and there's also in, in hockey, there's a lot of like just skating around, you know, just getting in the position to get the puck and all that stuff. So, yeah. Well, but don't get me wrong. In surfing, a lot of it is sitting around or s 
That's paddling. True. You know, 95% of the time you're paddling. You're not surfing. You're in your exercise either way. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, for the young entrepreneurs out there yep. who are just starting out. Yep. And they're like, I don't want to work for the man. I don't. Or I want to try not to work for the man. <laughs> or I need to get some experience. Like in my case, I had to get some experience to potentially work for the man, which I never ended up doing. Yeah. And what is the biggest, best advice you can give a young entrepreneur who wants to has an idea and just wants to go with that? Okay. So first of all, the motivation of not wanting to work for the man is not the optimal motivation. Okay. Okay. Because it's it's not. That's a negative motivation. That's, you know, I don't want to do something, so I'm going to go find something else, right? So that is, that's pushing you away from the negative. What you want is something that attracts you to the positive, which is a very mm. different attitude. And so I, I think that, you know, a lot of people will say that the ideal motivation for an entrepreneur is wanting to change the world. Denting the universe, you know, mm -hmm. electric cars, personal computers, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. Uh, I don't know about Bill Gates. Windows didn't exactly change the world for the better anyway. <laughs> so, so now, I, I would say that even that is more fictional than real. Yeah. I think that the genesis of great tech companies is the desire to make something that you yourself want to use. Two guys in a garage, two gals in a garage, a guy and a gal in a garage. They want a personal computer. They want a search engine. They want a social media website. You know, they want something like that. Um, I think that's that's what drives it. So you, you two guys in a garage build a computer, and guess what? More than those two people like it. That's Apple. Yeah. That's Apple. And, and I think that's uh, ideally how it should be. That is a great answer, Cause I, and I do agree with you that, you know, not working for the man is not the right way because ultimately sometimes people go work for the quote-unquote man, and then they go do the entrepreneurship. Afterwards, they get some ideas, and they use that as a building block, and they learn from, guess what, yes. the man. Yeah. I'm sure you learned a lot from Steve Jobs. Yes, and, and don't get me wrong. You can also learn a lot from the negative man. That's true, too. <laughs> That's yeah. okay, too. Absolutely. So what was it like, you know, going from Apple, where you're an entrepreneur, you're telling the good word of Apple to doing your first, was that your, that was your first CEO gig afterwards, right? Because you did diamond stuff beforehand. Yeah, I did. I did jewelry. Then I yeah. went to Apple and then I left to start a software company and I came back to Apple. Then I left to start a, a venture capital firm. You've done a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'm old. <laughs> You're not that old. Sixties <laughs> is the new forties. Yeah. <laughs> From exactly. your mouth to God's ears. Yeah. So where can people find you if they want to reach out, like, and they want? Well, they can go remark. They can search for Remarkable People podcast and listen to that. That's fantastic. Well, I mean, honestly, if they want to see my absolute best work, mm -hmm. my absolute best work is my podcast. I really it's feel fantastic. like. My whole career has prepared me for that podcast in the sense of knowing what to ask, knowing how to get straight to the point, and also being visible enough as opposed to personally known such that people such as Jane Goodall or Neil deGrasse Tyson or Margaret Atwood or mm -hmm. Christy Yamaguchi. I mean, this is the level of kind of people I have on my podcast. And it's not because I'm BFFs with all of those people. It's because many of them were Macintosh users and heard of me or something like that. So they, they heard, they knew of me. They didn't mm. know me, which is a big difference. Oh, that's so true. Oh, you that. know, can, yeah. I, can I just supplement the answer yes. to uh, the advice to the entrepreneur? Yeah. So um, more advice for the entrepreneur. First of all, understand that the purpose of a company is to create customers. It's not to raise money. It's not to get away from the man. It's not to create jobs. This is why politicians fundamentally do not understand entrepreneurship. This is why... You know, when you read that Devin Nunes has left Congress to run a social media site, you should be rolling on the floor, freaking doing backflips, like practically nauseous with laughter. Okay. 
And so, you know, whenever you hear this about, well, entrepreneurs want to create jobs, I mean, let me just repeat that to you the way most investors hear it, which is, so you're telling me that you want to create as much overhead as possible. That's your mission. I want you to create a company as cheaply, inexpensively, efficiently, without overhead as possible. So we are at odds here. You want to create a lot of jobs. I want to create a lot of revenue and profit. The two are not the same. Now, yes. if you create a humongously successful company and you're selling millions and millions of anything, you will create jobs. But yes. the point is not to create jobs. The point is to create millions of sales. And guess what? To fulfill that, you have to have millions of jobs. So the, remember, the purpose is to create a customer. And the second piece of advice I would give entrepreneurs is focus on finishing the prototype. That's mm -hmm. all that really matters. Everything else is bullshit because once you finish the prototype, then you're in the market and uh, a truism that is absolutely a truism, which is sales fixes everything. So everything else can go wrong. Sales fixes everything. So that's what you need to focus on. I think that's a great place to end. So Guy, what social media platform are you the most active on? I am most active on LinkedIn, by okay. far. By yep. far, okay. Yep. So everyone can go find you on LinkedIn as, guess what? Guy Just Kawasaki. Guy Kawasaki. I'm, I'm Guy Kawasaki everywhere except Facebook, where, get ready for this. My name is just Guy. <laughs> you got Guy. Oh, that's awesome. I have no, a three-letter awesome. name at Facebook. Yep. Well, Guy, this has been fantastic. I know you're Alrighty. a very busy guy, and I think thank the weather you, is Seth. good for surfing out there. Okay. Take care. Thank you Be very well, much for having me. And thank All you the for best. Being on. Okay. Bye-bye. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast trusted of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast trusted of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. How do we use communication to make the world a better place? I'm Dan Farkas, part of the Marketing Podcast Network. My new podcast, The Strategic Communicator, tries to answer that question. We feature industry leaders who offer tangible advice you could actually use after the show, and we'll learn about the people behind the process. Let's use communication to bring about a better planet. Subscribe today to The Strategic Communicator Podcast on the Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.